Hi, I'm Felicia Dadas and welcome to this edition of Voices. Voices is the weekly program of the Atlantic Caribbean Union of Seventh-day Adventists and features news, events and people from around the Bahamas, the Cayman Islands, the Turks and Caicos Islands and the world's Seventh-day Adventist Church. During the month of November 2013, the Atlantic Caribbean Union held its annual year-end and executive committee meetings. During these meetings, the conferences and missions and Northern Caribbean University presented reports of God's blessings during the year 2013. Join me on this edition of Voices as we listen to these reports of conferences and missions within ATCO and also Northern Caribbean University. As another year rolls away in the annals of time, it carried with it irrefutable evidence of the amazing faithfulness of our God and the joyous knowledge that His work is alive and well in these Cayman Islands. Evangelism Grand Cayman saw a very strong series of campaigns in the early months of this year, which spread across to Cayman Brac in May. Under a small tent in West End, God blessed the efforts of Pastor Cheyenne O'Connor and lay preacher David Campbell with 18 precious souls. Since then, Pastor Vaughn Henry and his team have added two more to the Creek Church, doubling their sole goal for the year. From East End to West Bay, the flames of evangelism burnt in our churches, leading up to the division-wide Elders Baptism Day on September 28. This effort saw the addition of 10 souls to the Kingdom of God and allowed the conference to exceed the union goal of 340. To date, we give thanks for a total of 408 new members added to the Seventh-day Adventist Church since January of this year. The Lord God be praised for His wonder-working power. Tithe and Offering While the healing of the world economy is slow, and many members continue to be negatively affected by unfavorable laws and regulations, their faithfulness remains unshaken. The Lord has blessed us with a 3.18% increase over last year in our tithe and a 0.43% increase in offering. Communication. Under the directorship of Ms. Teresa Chin, the communication department launched Cayman Adventist Television, CATV. The newly formed station debuted with a live broadcast of the Festival of the Laity on October 4 and 5. Since then, CATV feeds the Cayman community with a menu of local Adventist programs mixed with selected ones from Hope TV and 3ABN. During the year, the department also added new live and recorded local programs to our radio station, Praise 87.9 FM, and also improved and upgraded our website. Health Ministry On September 29, hundreds of church and community members joined together in the Cayman Academy Auditorium in one of the largest and most successful health fairs to date. The health fair, which is organized by the Health Ministry Department under the leadership of Pastor Capel Thompson, is an annual event which attracted local health professionals who made powerful presentations and demonstrations, providing a clear demonstration of the health message in action. Education. The new school year in September brought 247 students registering in the only Seventh-day Adventist school in the islands. It also saw the return of the faculty with a renewed commitment and dedication after an inspiring three-day retreat in Miami. This year, Cayman Academy achieved an overall 82.3% pass in external examinations. This was good news as they welcomed for the first time the accreditation team led by Mrs. Faye Patterson of the Inter-American Division and Dr. Cheryl Rowell from Atlantic Caribbean Union. After two days of evaluation, the school received a three-year accreditation. Festival of the Laity October 4 marked the beginning of our Festival of the Laity activities. Dr. Leonard Johnson headed the team of overseas delegates from the other fields in our union to the Lions Center, where thousands gathered for the opening night ceremony. With great precision, the activities began with a parade of the nations, as delegates dressed in their national costumes and carried their country's flag, representing over 22 different nationalities. Sabbath morning. 
October 5, the Lions Center welcomed the 16 congregations who each shared their evangelistic accomplishments and presented a short charge from one lay member. The main preacher was Brother Eugene Benjamin, a leading lay preacher from the Caribbean Union. The conference is indebted to Pastor Ronaldo Drakic and his team for a job well done. Ministerial. Under the leadership of Pastor Wilton MacDonald, the pastoral staff took off on September 24 for a one-day fasting and prayer retreat at the East End Church. The program, which began at 8 a.m. and continued until 5 p.m., saw each pastor presenting a thought from the Word and praying for each other's personal and professional life. On October 3 and 4, with the help of our union president, we welcomed Elder Hector Sanchez from the Inter-American Division to our shores, who led out in a two-day ministerial development seminar for our pastors. Youth Department The Youth Department, under the leadership of Dr. Ivor Harry, has seen some significant improvements this year. With the assistance of Sister Merle Watkins, a transformation of our Pathfinder and Master Guide clubs was evident. The Pathfinder Easter Camp saw record attendance of 183 Pathfinders. A record total of 18 Master Guides were invested and 26 adventurers were inducted in the Pathfinder program. The year's activities culminated with a grand fair on the grounds of Kimmin Academy, where various clubs demonstrated their skills in tent pitching and drill formation. The Cayman Islands Conference also hosted the third annual Whale and Johnson Bible Boom Finals, with three contestants representing the North and South Bahamas Conferences and the Cayman Islands Conference. The title went to Patrick Brown of the North Bahamas Conference, who emerged first among the winners. The competition sparked renewed interest among our youth who have already begun preparation for next year's competition. Children's Ministry the month of May was teeming with activities for the children of our conference. The annual Children's Ministries Convention was held at the Triple C Auditorium with guest speaker Brenda Walsh from 3ABN. Hundreds of children and their parents were blessed by the presentations and activities specifically designed to stimulate their minds. This was followed by the annual Children's Fun Day at the Agricultural Grounds. Sabbath, May 11, marked the graduation service for the Child Preachers Training Program. This was held at the Savannah Church. In September, the Children's Ministries Department, in association with the Adventist Risk Management and the Public Affairs and Religious Liberty, hosted a joint service to educate on elements of a new law passed in the Cayman Islands, designed to better protect children from those who would do them harm. The presenter, Mrs. Eleanor Winter, is the manager of social workers at the Department of Children and Family Service and a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Men's Ministry The men of the Cayman Islands were not to be left out. June 7 saw the annual men's convention, which was held at the Marriott Hotel, featuring guest speaker Pastor Leonardo Ramming from South Bahamas Conference. Hundreds of men attended the two-day events and listened to presentations ranging from male spirituality to gender health. As the year draws to its close, we can with one voice say, Ebenezer, hitherto hath the Lord helped us. Union leaders, guests from the wider organization, fellow administrators and colleagues from sister fields within our union, warmish regards and greetings. Words can hardly express the excitement that permeates the South Bahamas Conference as we in this half of the year have continued the spirit of the Year of the Laity under the theme, Double Your Portion. This report highlights the work of our laypersons coupled with the pastorate from June 2013 to the present. I trust that it will serve to encourage all of us to double our efforts in this year ahead so that we can be singing the same song soon and very soon we are going to see the King. Additionally, we can also sing Home at Last. Home at Last. Thank God Almighty we are home at last. Come with me as we recount God's leading in His work in the South Bahamas Conference.
meeting got off to a good start with an historic ordination service of eight pastors who were given their credentials by our union. Union President Dr. Leonard Johnson called on the pastors to serve with distinction. Guest speaker Dr. Clifford Jones of Andrews University invoked the glory of God and the praises went up. With the biblical mandate to preach, teach, baptize, and preach again, scores of lay members shined for Jesus. Elder Vernal Roll, who was honored in August of this year. Elder Marvel Farquharson, who represented SBC at the division's mid-year meetings. Lucanda Gardner, who was honored as one of the top four laypersons in the union at the Festival of the Laity in the Cayman Islands Conference, along with a cadre of other dynamic laypersons who are consistent and relentless in winning souls to God's kingdom. To date, some 750 persons have been baptized in the conference, and we still anticipate our goal of 960 to be realized before December 31st. On the same weekend of the Festival of the Laity, Alexandria Scott of the South Bahamas Conference placed second in the Union's Bible Boom competition. We highlight her achievement. Our hearts were all made glad with the visit of our world leader to our local field. The message was centered on Paul's view of righteousness by faith. Additional GC leaders were welcomed, namely Erica Puny and Heather Dawn Small. ASI is forging ahead under the leadership of Dave Williams as interim president. Through their support, the church in Mangrove Key has been refurbished, the radio station upgraded, and the erection of our new tower is underway. Other departments that ensured that evangelism efforts were part of their mission were children's ministry, with 20 children baptized, and women's ministry, who have reported four baptisms thus far. We give commendations to Pastor Dr. Wilfred Adderley, who successfully steered the evangelism boat through our own local festival of the laity with three days of non-stop excitement. The ministerial department further equipped our elders to become more effective leaders and evangelists with our one-day conclave and the pastors in a one-day leadership conference. Bahamas Academy, the Centennial School, has been named the model educational institution of our union, receiving a $10,000 gift from the Inter-American Division. We are grateful and understand the responsibility it also calls us to. In a few days, under the theme, From Good to Great, the school will be officially opened. We nurture some 880 students every day and have baptisms twice a year, the last of which yielded 20 precious souls. We say thank you to our directors from the union and conference, along with the principal of Bahamas Academy, Mr. Anthony Burroughs and his team for their support. And we express appreciation to God for how he has moved through the government in extending an additional three acres of land to further develop other necessary facilities. The gospel continues to be shared by television and radio on ATV 53 and Word SBC 88.3 FM. A new baby girl was born and added to the sisterhood of churches in the conference. The name given was La Senda de la Vida. The baby was born through the united efforts of the division, union, Montemorelos University, along with our conference. To celebrate its birth, a baby shower was organized by the members requesting needed gifts for the establishment of this new congregation. A special thanks is given to God's people who responded to this new concept. The church in October was called to 40 days of prayer and fasting, seeking more earnestly for revival and reformation. The hearts of members were encouraged as they saw God answer their prayers one after the other. And as a result of the 40 days of prayer and fasting, the administration of the conference were prompted by the Holy Spirit to launch a program called Back to Faith to seek after members who have fallen by the way, inviting them to come back home. Pray for us as we launch this program in the South Bahamas and that this initiative will be modeled in our sister fields to impact millions of prodigals to return home. Our pastors will launch it in our conference on New Year's Eve, inviting thousands of former members to church at that service. Undergirding the evangelistic report of the conference is our financial position. We must give God thanks as He has blessed us as a conference to realize a 5.19% increase in the tithe up to the end of October, notwithstanding the tough economic times in which we exist. In conclusion, the portrait of the days leading up to Pentecost as outlined in Acts chapter 1 verses 4 through 8 comes vividly to mind. The disciples were assembled together waiting in the upper room for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit according to His instructions. Jesus told them that not only were they to be baptized with water, 
but baptism with the Holy Spirit would also become necessary in order for them to move out and to accomplish the assignment ahead of them. The hours of preparation included repentance, confession, and the coming together in one accord to accomplish this work. My desire is for Pentecost to manifest itself again, given the task that is before us. Therefore, I echo the words of the hymnist, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Break me, melt me, mold me, and fill me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. May this be the desire of us all as we fall afresh today and every day on Christ, the Rock of Ages. Gospel Workers, page 352 wrote, The work of God in this earth can never be finished until the men and women comprising our church membership rally to the work and unite their efforts with those of the ministers and church offices. Union officers, colleagues, and members of the executive committee, greetings. This report is a testament of the unity of the pastorate and the laity in the Turks and Caicos Islands mission in the second half of 2013. The year 2013 is earmarked as the year of the laity and our laity has shone brightly in every aspect of the life of the church and we're grateful for their service. In recognition of their service, the mission held its first ever festival of the laity on September 6-7, 2013. We were honored to have Pastor Ferreira, Personal Ministries Director of the Inter-American Division as guest speaker for the event, along with Pastor Al Powell, Personal Ministries Director of the Atlantic Caribbean Union. Lay people from throughout the islands were awarded and shared what the members of their congregations were doing in the community and the souls that were won to the Kingdom of God through their efforts. The most outstanding lay person that was selected in the Turks and Caicos Islands mission and subsequently Atlantic Caribbean Union was Elder Osius Joseph of the Five Keys Church, who was recognized with various awards for his outstanding work in evangelism, church leadership and growth, as well as community development. We continue to press toward the goal of taking the gospel to every individual living in our archipelago. In the month of June, the Women's Ministries Departments of the Ephesus and Blue Hills Churches held an evangelistic campaign with Pastor Anastasia Banzi. In the month of August, the annual youth campaign was held on the island of Providencialis under the theme, Jesus Loves Blackberry, with Speaker Pastor Roy Lindsay. The Philadelphia Spanish Company also conducted an evangelistic campaign in the month of August with Pastor Carlos Uribe from the Dominican Republic. The Maranatha Church held an evangelistic campaign on the island of South Caicos in the month of September with Pastor Roy Lindsay. The flames of evangelism then shifted to the island of Grand Turk at the Ebenezer Church in October with Pastor Ruldi Alexander from New Jersey. Presently in Providenciales, the Blue Hills Church Men's Ministry is conducting an evangelistic campaign with native layman Elder Michael Dean as speaker. The Five Keys Church on Sunday night launched its crusade with Pastor Wilson Isnord under the Big Tent. And then later this month, the Bethel Church will conduct a lay outreach campaign in another area of the island. Today, we have baptized 118 persons, or almost 75% of the Union's baptismal goal. However, we expect to go over the 100% mark before the year is out. We give God thanks for the efforts of the laity, along with our pastors in the area of evangelism. Education continues to play an important role in our mission. In the month of July, the Maranatha Academy graduated 32 young people who have either gone on to pursue higher education at NCU in Jamaica or in the UK or have entered the working world. During the week of October 28 to 31, 
the students and staff celebrated SDA Heritage Week. Different aspects of the church's history, both locally and worldwide, were demonstrated via PowerPoints and tablet presentations, dramatizations, vegetarian dishes were prepared by the Home Economics Department, and a model of the biblical sanctuary with its furnishes was made by the students of the woodwork class. The academy also just concluded its week of prayer with speaker, former student and TCI mission champion youth preacher, Jerry Cadius. A special feature during the week was a prayer room that was established so that students could retreat to and find solitude with the Lord. The youth department of the mission has been active in the second half of 2013. In the month of July, Youth Director Pastor Roy Lindsay conducted an honors camp on the island of Providenciales, where young people were able to earn a number of honors. On World Pathfinder Day, the Pathfinder staged an End It Now march on the island of Providenciales. The Youth Department sought to bring awareness to the rise in violence against women and children on that island. Our children continue to play an important role in the life of their local churches. In the month of August, they held a children's street meeting in the community of Blue Hills with speakers Javier Forbes and Joshua Daniels. We continue to pray for and train our children to work for the Lord. We continue to give God thanks for the faithfulness of our members in a very slow recovering local economy comprised of major businesses in receivership and restructuring two-month closure of the second highest employer in the Turks and Caicos Islands, high unemployment, underemployment, and tax increases have severely impacted many of our members. To date, our tithe took a dip of 7.7% and the offerings increased by 2.05% compared to last year. The church continues to be the compassionate hands and feet of Jesus in the community. Recently, the mission through its local Adventist Development and Relief Agency officially signed a memorandum of understanding with the government of the Turks and Caicos Islands to assist in reducing the vulnerabilities of human settlements and strengthen their capacities for managing disasters at all levels, shelter management, humanitarian aid, and disaster support. The mission continues to develop its health ministry, the right arm of the everlasting gospel. In October, a health expo was taken to the public at the Graceway IGA supermarket at which government officials commended the mission for its efforts in the area of health. In attendance were the Premier, Honorable Dr. Rufus Ewing, and his wife, Dr. Perry Ewing, and the Minister of Health and Human Services, Honorable Portia Stubbs-Smith. In November, a health expo was also held in the town of Grand Turk at the Clock Tower. Both health expos were held in public areas and well supported by the community. Once again, I say thank you to Almighty God and also to my fellow conscientious administrator, Brother Hopeton Benzi, and our diligent departmental directors, pastors, executive committee members, and school board members of the Turks and Caicos Islands Mission. I want to thank them as we continue to work together and keep pressing toward the mark of a finished work and the glorious appearing of our great Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Northern Caribbean University, a private Seventh-day Adventist institution, has its headquarters in Mandeville, Manchester, Jamaica, with three other campuses strategically located in Kingston, Montego Bay, and St. Anne. Jointly owned by the Atlantic Caribbean Union Mission and the Jamaica Union, this 106-year-old institution continues to offer quality Christ-centered education to its students who hail from across the globe. The Good to Great mantra, posited by President Trevor Gardner in 2012, remains the thrust of NCU and the nine strategic priorities the basis for evaluating the progress during the 2013 year. The university introduced a consecration service for workers on October 5, which is intended to be held at least once every school year. 
The spiritual atmosphere on the campus continues to be decorated with the Evangelism Weekend and Week of Prayer every semester. From the combined efforts of Pastor Don West and Pastor Alton Williams, the fall semester saw 15 souls added to the church, an accomplishment wrought only by the grace of God. NCU continues to set itself apart as a leader of information technology in the region. Two members of the former NCU Zormis team, winners of the 2010 Imagine Cup, have established an online company where they recently unveiled the Greek.ly app for Microsoft users. The company has since been endorsed by the Minister of Technology in Jamaica. Additionally, they were invited by the U.S. and Malaysian governments to participate in the Global Entrepreneurship Summit held in Malaysia from October 8 to 13. Subsequently, they represented the Caribbean region at the World Bank Global Youth Summit held in Washington, D.C. on October 20. A testament of the caliber of graduates the university continues to nurture. Meanwhile, internally, seven graduate programs have received full accreditation from the University Council of Jamaica, while 30 undergraduate programs are accredited by the same body. In celebrating the success of current students, NCU held its annual Honours Convocation on October 28 this year. A total of 925 students were awarded for their outstanding academic performance, a 20% increase from last year and just about 22% of the student population. The university continues to be proud of its multicultural student population and the Department of Humanities is boasting its five English as a second language or ESL students registered this semester. The students come from the Spanish and French Caribbean and one from China. In recognition of the Year of the Lady, the university recognized eight lay preachers for their faithful and outstanding contribution to the mission of evangelism on Sabbath, August 10, 2013, during its graduation weekend. The Capital Advancement Project or Endowment Goal is now $10 million US dollars in five years, a reduction from the original figure of $131 million. US dollars. To provide students with the latest technological advancement to aid in their studies, the University Information System Services, UNIS, upgraded the existing computer lab facilities and constructed a new computer lab that houses 55 computers that have full multimedia capabilities. As the university continues to impact the lives of Jamaicans, the Morris Entrepreneurship Center of Northern Caribbean University, in association with the Jamaica Social Investment Fund, implemented the Raytown Employment Skills Training and Entrepreneurship Development Program. Thirty individuals benefited from the program that culminated with a graduation ceremony on September 26. Among its objectives was to alleviate unemployment among the residents through entrepreneurship and employability skills training. In observing the continued violent confrontations and reprisal killings, NCU partnered with the Chaplaincy Services Unit of the Jamaica Constabulary Force and the Aero 3 Police Division to coordinate a proactive violence interruption strategy intervention program in targeted communities. The intervention program's team also collaborated with the JCF Associate Chaplains, Station Chaplains, Trainers and Responders from the Aero 3 Police Division to work with practicum, fieldwork, and internship students from NCU. Noting the trend in the tertiary level educational industry with utilization of advanced technology for students to study online, NCU has undergone the implementation of distance education initiatives, inclusive of the launch of the Blackboard Collaborate software to support virtual classroom sessions with the intent to drive enrollment. Additionally, the UNIS department has increased the internet bandwidth on the main campus and extension sites to support more wireless access to technological resources by faculty, students, and staff. The administration of NCU remains committed to accomplishing the strategic goals, mission, and vision of this institution of God's planting. As we continue to execute strategy in our daily operations, we maintain our resolve to demonstrate the core values of this institution. We are comforted to know that God will make all things possible once we commit our resources to Him and work in accordance with His will.